All right, folks, uh, my name is Oscar Spencer. Uh, as mentioned, I'm a principal engineer at F5. And at F5, we focus on secure application delivery. A very big part of that story is our company, Nginx. And at F5, we're responsible not just for all of Nginx open source, but also all the commercial offerings for Nginx as well. So if you don't know about Nginx, it's one of the world's most popular web servers. Developers use Nginx to optimize, scale, and secure modern apps and APIs. But it's not just a web server anymore. There's so much more to Nginx. Of course, we know it's a great reverse proxy and load balancer. Also acts as an awesome API gateway. Can manage your traffic in Kubernetes. Can do things like encryption and manage access control. And even protect your apps from malicious actors on the internet through web application firewalls. But there's even more to the Nginx ecosystem than just that. Uh, besides Nginx open source, we also have Nginx Plus, which is the commercial offering, Nginx Instance Manager, Manager App Protect, Ingress Controller, Gateway Fabric, and there's even more than just that. But one of the things that makes me so excited to get to work on Nginx is just how widespread Nginx is. Over a third of all websites on the internet use Nginx, and that's the ones that we know about, and I think that's absolutely incredible. On Docker Hub, Nginx has more than one billion downloads, and nearly half of all organizations that run containers at all use Nginx. So it's super duper widespread, right? How did Nginx come to be in this place in the world? Well, my take on that is it's extensibility. I think extensibility is what made Nginx into the powerhouse that it is today. If you're not super familiar with how the internals of Nginx works, uh, it's a module system. And you load different modules into Nginx to add functionality. So even if you're doing something basic like HTTP, that's an Nginx module that gets loaded in. But as a developer, you can pick and choose what modules get loaded into Nginx. And they're not necessarily just first party Nginx modules. You can load up modules that anyone else has written. So you have a whole bunch of opportunity to take Nginx and extend it to do whatever you need it to do for your application. Now, Nginx modules, they're written in C and not every developer wants to do that. But conveniently, there are a little bit easier ways for developers to get involved in extending Nginx. Two of those ways are through scripting. Uh, you can use Lua scripts, you can use Nginx JavaScript, and you can just write scripts that modify how Nginx behaves, how it routes traffic, things like that. Now, this is awesome and provides so much more reach for developers because you don't have to write C code, you can write an easy scripting language. But one of the big challenges with doing something like this is you have to maintain that, and it's super hard. Nginx JavaScript actually is its own implementation of a full JavaScript engine that runs inside of Nginx, and that makes it super duper fast, and that's awesome, but that's super duper hard to maintain. So the big question is, is there an easier way for the folks of Nginx to offer extensibility to all different kinds of developers? And I think that begs the question of WebAssembly, right? So WebAssembly, with all the awesome, well-defined ABIs that you get from the component model, could really provide a way for Nginx to offer a ton of different languages, not just Lua scripting or JavaScript or any of the other languages that folks have implemented is, as an Nginx module especially with the fact that we've got such a small code footprint in WASM modules, and the fact that we've also got near native runtime speeds of these WebAssembly modules means that Nginx can continue being a super duper performant proxy. So another question, of course, is are there other proxies out there that are doing WebAssembly? And the big answer to that is absolutely yes. Uh, Envoy Proxy, I think, was probably the first uh, big player in this space where they said, hey, we see WebAssembly as an awesome way to extend Envoy and let people write their own plugins to modify its behavior. They built their own ABI for this, and that later becomes, uh, became a specification called ProxyWASM. Traffic Proxy also said, hey, we wanna do WASM stuff too because this seems pretty sick, and they're built on another specification called HTTP WASM. Now, these are two different standards. And that's a little bit rough, especially if we're trying to get to a point in the ecosystem where we can do awesome sharing between not just one particular proxy, but all of them. And so ProxyWASM, um, there has been uh, this effort to sort of morph it into a brand new standard that all the proxies can use, 
which I think is fantastic. Um, but if you look at the proxy WASM specification in, uh, in and of itself, it is very Envoy flavored. And that's why it doesn't quite work when you try to stick it in another proxy. Though folks have tried, there are third party Nginx modules out there that implement proxy WASM to the best that they can. And with traffic and HTTP WASM, the honest answer there was they didn't know where the community was. They said, oh, well, we see these folks in WebAssembly. They're maybe doing this component model thing. Maybe they're not. We don't know what the best way is, but we just want to get something done, so we're going to implement this. And that brings us to the fact that standards are really freaking hard. So WebAssembly hit the scene back in 2015, right? And there were loads of developers that said, hey, this is awesome, and I want to use it. But it takes time to come up with industry standards around specifically how we want to use these things. And you've all had that pressure from your boss at work of, hey, I really just need you to ship this thing. That's really what I need you to do right now. So it becomes really tough to say, oh, I'm gonna go get involved in the standards process, we're gonna go across the ecosystem, get everyone involved to come up with the best thing for everyone. That's super hard to do when you really just gotta get something done. And speaking of that, that means next year WebAssembly is gonna be 10 years old and that's wild to think about to me. But ultimately, we do know that if we follow the standards process, we can have amazing interoperability between all the different technologies in our ecosystem that use that standard. So let's talk about WASI. WASI was initially developed to be uh, this system interface for when you're running WebAssembly code outside the browser, uh, very similar to POSIX, that sort of thing. The component model gave us uh, the canonical ABI. So this was a way which if you've ever had to write language bindings between two different languages before, I'm sorry, <laughs> I know that sucks, but the beauty of the component model is the fact that we get this for free. So we get this huge idea that if we have a well-defined interface for all languages that support uh, bindings generation, we can generate SDKs for free for those languages and they can work and they can link together. So WASI Preview 2 is simply WASI Preview 1 but rebased on the component model but sneaky, sneaky, <laughs> there was one more standard in there, and that standard was WASI HTTP proxy. And so this standard uh, was developed to be the evolution of proxy WASM, uh, developed in conjunction with the folks who originally wrote proxy WASM, and it's a much more proxy neutral ABI. So comparing uh, a WASI HTTP proxy to proxy WASM, you don't see uh, these things that seem very specific, like, oh, well, when this request starts in this particular manner or when this header is available, you don't get that. Instead, it's here's a handle to the entire request. You can pick and choose and say, hey, I care about the headers or I care about just the body of this request, and then you return a response. That makes it super duper simple to go and implement in a ton of different proxies. It might not get you all the bells and whistles of everything that you might get from the proxy, but it does get us compatibility between everyone. I also want to talk about what WASI HTTP proxy looks like in WASI Preview 3. The big thing here is that we get streams. So with the addition of streams, it improves all the types of WASI HTTP proxy. So your requests and responses are actually the same whether you're sending a request or you're receiving a request, which that's huge. That means our handler type is gonna be absolutely the same for an outgoing handler or an incoming handler. So it's kind of hard to imagine in your mind, but the big deal here is we can actually compose WebAssembly components together that implement these handlers. And so if I have a WebAssembly component that says I know how to respond to requests, and I have another component that says I know how to handle uh, uh, requests, you can just stick those bad boys together. And you can have your host do this for you, or you can use a tool like WAC uh, for composing WebAssembly components together to say, I'm gonna have these two things, these two services chained together with no network hops in between. So you get to even remove a full network stack in between these plugins. And that's gonna be really important. We always end up running tons of plugins together. So being able to take them all together is absolutely awesome in terms of improving uh, performance. So if all of the different proxy servers out there who wanted to have some kind of support for WebAssembly said, let's rally around the one standard, we'd have this insane level of compatibility between plugins written for any proxy out there. If you think about it for a moment, one of the most copied and pasted pieces of code in the world is an Nginx config. Imagine that level of sharing, but for all types of plugins throughout the ecosystem. That'd be absolutely incredible. 
especially think about if you're a developer at a large organization and you have a ton of different proxies running in your infrastructure and you've got some business logic that needs to apply to all of them. It'd be amazing if you could write that code one time and have it work across all your different proxies. And for that reason, I'm exceptionally excited to announce that Nginx will be adopting WASI HTTP proxy in the coming year. So I'm super duper excited for this. We're gonna see uh, some amazing collaboration between all the different proxies, especially as Proxy WASM is already trying to move forward to WASI HTTP proxy. And I think we actually will see this in the ecosystem. So I also wanna talk really quick about some other useful WASI standards. Uh, one is WASI config. Believe it or not, there isn't a standard way to configure a component right now. And I talk all this big game about, okay, we're going to compile all these plugins, these WASM components, uh, and not have to recompile them. <laughs> and that's not 100% true right now, but with WASI config, we'll be able to say, hey, I want you to connect to this server, and the component can say, okay, I can do that for you. Uh, so I think that's a standard that's gonna turn out to be very important for this sort of thing. Uh, additionally, WASI key value. Uh, if you've ever dealt with any kind of system like this, you know, hey, I just wanna have a store somewhere, and I don't care exactly what the backing is, I don't care if it's Redis, I don't care if it's a file system, I just care that I can store some keys and retrieve some values. And having, especially with plugins that work across any type of proxy, then we don't care what the implementation is, we just care about maximum compatibility, and WASI key value will get us that. And for WASI Blob Store, this is a really fun one for me because let's not forget that Nginx, it's a web server at its heart, right? And tons and tons of folks use Nginx to serve static content. And of course, you probably have static content that exists in a Blob Store somewhere, and once again, you probably don't necessarily care what that is. Maybe it's an S3 bucket, uh, maybe it's just a file system somewhere, or even a database or something, we don't care. We just wanna have an interface that allows us to do this. So, of course, in addition to all of that, we actually need a way to package and distribute all these components. Uh, conveniently, there are tons of folks working in the WASM ecosystem to get us to there. Uh, so there are folks who are already working on both WARG registries, so uh, registries for specifically WebAssembly components, uh, working on leveraging all of the technology that we get for free uh, that exists from OCI. And there's a tool called Wackage, which makes it easy for you to push up and pull down components and really start getting us to this uh, place where we see we're having ultimate sharing between all the different proxies. And with that, I really think the future is bright. I really do see this world where we can have this amazing compatibility, this beautiful friendship that brews between all of the different web servers and proxies out there. And I think it's coming much sooner than folks think. And with that, thank you very much. <laughs>